So now that we've talked about sort of representing data, or at least somewhat getting into the idea of the different types of data that we can store in memory, how do we store them? And that is where we use a term known as a variable. And the entire idea here is that this variable, you know, just to think about it, is I need some term to represent a location in memory. So what does that mean? If we think about the visualization that I used previously, where we just think about this as if it was a RAM stick for our computer. When I use or when I want to represent a, well, when I want to represent, say, the number five, right, I can put five in my code, right? We saw that uh, on Jupyter. But what happens if I want to store that five? I need to use it later on uh, in part of my code. I have to give it some variable name. And again, so this x would be what we would call a variable. And the variable just means I am creating a block in memory, and I'm giving it this valuation of a 5. Store the binary representation of 5 in this square. Now, variables can also have different names. They don't have to be uh, single characters. You see them uh, a lot. It's not that they're not uh, all over the place, but I can also give it a much stronger name. So maybe something like price. So price, let's say, uh, I don't know, $4.15. Well, once again, uh, this price is just going to represent a square in memory. And then the value I associate to that is going to be stored inside that square. And that goes with every type of data. So if I came in and, uh, you know, um, name, name Adam. And I made that a, a string again, once again, that name is going to be stored just to see that actually, let me change colors here. Name Adam. That is going to be stored somewhere in memory, just allocate some block in memory for the value associated to that name. In this case, uh, it is called name and I gave it the value of Adam. So what can we do with this? Well, again, this is where we can start to build out our algorithms. For example, if I wanted to calculate the area of a rectangle, well, I could have a variable called length. And again, this is just going to, uh, in memory, store a seven. And then I'm gonna have another variable, and this time we call it width, that stores some other variable called uh, two, or sorry, uh, some value two, and then a location called height uh, stores a nine. Now I am creating a third variable, and yes, that does mean that that is going to get its own slot, but this is where we can sort of do something known as left to right association. You see, in Python, it follows this same format pretty much all the time. On the left, we're going to be dealing with the memory location. So again, length, that memory location. It, you know, Python figures out how to do that memory location. It says uh, that spot is gonna be a seven. That spot is gonna be a two. That spot is going to be a nine. This spot is going to be the mathematical representation or the evaluation of this mathematical expression. Two times width times length, width times height. Uh, length times height. So what is Python doing? Well, every single time it looks on the right side, it has to evaluate this expression. It first says, well, what is 
the value of width. And so it goes into memory, says, oh, well, I know the value of width, it's a two. What is the value of length? Oh, well, I know the value of length, it's a seven. So, and then you can see uh, it's gonna have the little asterisk going on there. So it says, well, what is two times seven? Oh, that's 14. Oh, well, we're not done though. You know, PIMDAS again says we have to continue doing this. So again, what is the value of width? Well, it's a two. And what's the value of height? Well, it's a nine. So this time two times nine, Oh, well, it's an 18. Again, PEMDAS keeps going. So uh, length, length is uh, seven. Height is nine. Seven times nine is 63. And then what do we do with all of this? Well, again, PEMDAS is coming into play. We have giant parentheses around the entire thing going on here. So we have to add this up. This is a 32, uh, that is a 95. <clears throat> so this entire valuation, just to change colors on it, this entire evaluation is in 95. And we need to do two times 95. Two times 95, I think that's 190 off the top of my head. If not, you know, correct me. But now that I know my 190, I take that and I am going to store it in the location that I have denoted for area. And so I've placed it in here. So just to sort of see this in a little more action, right? We have, in our case, uh, Jupiter, we can work off of Jupiter. I can give it any variable that I operate with. So if I came in and said something like item price is $4.99, right? Now, let's say, for example, I want to calculate out, I'm going to buy uh, five of these items. So quantity, quantity equals five, and then sales tax is going to be 7%. So I've just established three variables, item price, how many I want of them, and then what the sales tax of that is. Now I have these variables. They are stored somewhere in memory, just floating about. So how could I then create a new value, something like total? Oh, well, you know, I want to do, in this case, um, quantity times uh, item price. Oh, not quantity, quantity with a T there. Now, what we just see here is, oh, well, I don't see a value going on there. That's perfectly fine because I didn't say in Python to show me the value, right? I said, do the mathematical equation of quantity times item price, store that in total. Never in my code, nowhere in my code did it say, show me what the value was. So in its world, in Python's world, it doesn't. I can come in and I can introduce something like the print command, print total. Oh, okay, well, we get uh, 24, 95, a bunch of zeros to a three. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see that in a little more uh, action later on of why that's uh, a thing. But as you can see, you know, oh, well, we can get a calculation going on here. Just for our sake, since that is a little overly complicated, I'll go in and let's say the item is uh, $5.50. We can call this the uh, math tax because we want to get rid of this thing. Ah, so again, oh well, five times 5.5 equals uh, 27.5. Okay, so now we can continue. I haven't done anything with my sales tax yet. So this is where we get into, once again, this idea of left to right association. 
total currently just has the total value stored inside of it. But I could come in and say something like total equals total uh, plus total, here we are, total times sales tax. So what is this going to do? Well, just to look at this, total again is 27. And I'll even add this in above it. Location equals 275 plus 275 times 0 0.07. Again, so we're effectively saying take the 27.5, right? Keep that. We want that. Plus 7% of 27.5. I'm not going to do that math. You do it as a thought experiment. I don't know. But take those two values, add them together. Then make that the new value at my total location. So in this case, if I came in and printed my total afterwards, I should see a value of, in this case, 27 plus total times sales tax, which is roughly, uh, it looks like 1.9-ish, 1.95-ish uh, going on there. So 27.5 plus 1.9-ish will give me a total of 29.425. Awesome. Now, when it comes to, again, naming these variables, uh, you know, you can name them with single characters. It's not against the rule. It's try and be more descriptive whenever you can is the word, the, the way I will describe it, right? When I do something like uh, quantity times item price uh, equals total and then like sales tax times total, these words, these variable terms make sense. We aren't trying to uh, guess what each value is going to represent, right? That would be much harder if I had came in and gave these, uh, these values, right? Or sorry, D, right? A equals 5.5, B equals 5, you know, none of that makes any sense from a, a literal standpoint. So, you know, try to choose, you know, your naming perspectives. There are other word rules, you know, as you can see, one of the things that I like to do is I like to follow the lowercase with underscores naming convention. So if I have a variable that has more than one word to it, uh, so like item, name, right? Uh, you know, just to finish this off, banana. Banana, yeah, right. I'm using an underscore here to represent uh, the variable going on there. There are some more fancier rules to it. Obviously, you can't start with a numerical value. You cannot have weird, crazy symbols in there. And then there are some words that Python is going to say, you can't do that. You cannot say, uh, for example, class. I can't say class is going to be equal to five, right? It freaks out because class is an, a word that Python uses for other things. And so it's just saying, you can't change that. Don't, don't try and break Python on me uh, going on there. So the last uh, thing to sort of talk about is the role of variables. And there are, just like with different data types, there are tons of different roles that a variable can play with. And for our sake, don't even worry about the vast majority of these. So just ignore like these and these for right now to at least start focusing in on just these three that I haven't touched. Constant variables. The entire idea to a constant variable is I don't want to change that variable, right? The item's price. I never want to have item price. Once I've established item price, I never want to change the value of item price. Same kind of thing. I never want to change the value of sales tax. These are values that shouldn't change. 
but something like a gatherer. This is now taking in those different values and applying them. If I say, for example, wanted to uh, include, well, I can't really do it in this context, I think, uh, or I guess it would be like, if I had another constant called quantity, quantity times uh, item price, right? That would be a way for me to, uh, you know, gather up those values into a single variable and work off of it. Gatherers can, as you can see sort of uh, from here, let me get rid of this one. Gatherers can uh, operate on the right side. There's nothing against it. There's no, you know, uh, Python police uh, that you're going to have to deal with. But uh, the entire idea here is a gatherer can be on the right side, meaning you can uh, use it. And then it can be on the left side. You can change it. Again, as you can sort of see here, uh, total, or rather, let me undo you and then change. Let me do it a little differently. Let me come in here and say, ah, uh, da, da. yeah, that works. Total, uh, where, oh, yeah, oh, that's why. My apologies. I was trying to find it, and this is, again, this is a perfect reason why you don't, you know, name those variables like very basic, simple, like D uh, kind of things, because then you can't figure out where your total is. Here, total is, again, a gatherer uh, style variable. It takes and establishes the quantity times item price, so it does that calculation. But as you can sort of see here, this is a value that I'm okay with changing. Right? I don't want to change item price. I don't want to change quantity or sales tax. It depends on, again, the context. But in this case, total, perfectly fine to uh, adjust it, make changes to it. Uh, and so again, it is this idea of just, it is a gathering style variable. Temporary, uh, as you can sort of guess, they're just meant to be one-offs. That's where your, your single character, uh, I need to make a quick, variable real quick kind of approaches come into play but again it's this idea of your your variables have different roles attached to them and so it is your your job to sort of make sure you can understand what that role is that way you don't uh mess up some of your variables so you don't accidentally change item price from 5.5 .5 to 5000 because you accidentally changed the value at that memory address